Hi everybody, Happy New Year and welcome back. Yes, I have a new hair colour. I did it today, I told my hairdresser that um, I wanted to change because that grey turned blonde, turned ash blonde. <laughs> I don't know, it turned a really weird colour. And yeah, he gave me this kind of like an ashy brown colour to mask that bleached hair. Um, yeah, I didn't have a haircut actually. I told him that I'm gonna keep my hair long this year So he's gonna help me, you know, turn this into a bob and we'll, we'll see how it goes So today I'm gonna share with you my best of 2019 I've got a bit of skincare, I've got a bit of makeup and I've got a bit of miscellaneous items Which I thought would be fun to throw it into the mix. Not everything was discovered last year So it is a good mix of some of my, you know, really holy grail favorites as well as some stuff that you know I was really surprised that I liked last year. The sun decided to pop out. It is super hot outside like really really hot so forgive me for the lighting if it goes like up and down a little bit because I am using mostly natural light with a little tiny ring light on my left side. So okay let's get started. I have to mention my SK2 like if I don't mention my SK2 something's not right I've like totally changed my skincare regime. My SK2 Facial Treatment Essence, I love this. This is like something that rebalances my skin. I just splash it on after my toner, or I don't even use a toner, I just splash this on. I don't know, my skin just goes, ah, yes, love it. So I've been using so many bottles. This bottle is almost there. I don't know about you guys, but I love finishing skincare. Skincare is so hard to finish. Maybe because I keep switching um, different moisturizers and s different items to try. I find it really difficult to like finish. But I love finishing skincare. I know finishing it is also, that also means gonna going out there to spend money. <laughs> but I don't know, it's just so satisfying to see the bottle like at the, at the very end. You're like, yes, I did it. <laughs> I did it. This 10% niacinamide booster from Paula's Choice has been mentioned on my channel so many times. This is probably my, I don't know, 10 bottle easily. I, I don't know how many I've gone through it. This to me is like a secret helper. When I started to use this, like my first bottle, I thought, what am I putting on my face? It doesn't feel like anything. It's like water. It doesn't do anything. But when I finished my first bottle and I didn't use it for like another month, I felt like my skin was missing something. It felt as if it was a little bit drier. It felt like it was lacking a bit of hydration. And I was wondering whether it was this. So the moment I reintroduced this back into my skincare, I was like, oh my gosh, amazing. So you don't see a result like immediately. You have to pretty much go through a full bottle. And then by this time you go to your second bottle, you go like, ah, oh, there is something that this guy is doing. So. It's amazing. This Sisley Le Integral Anti-Age Moisturizer is my favorite deep hydration moisturizer. I can use this during the day when I'm really, really feeling like dry, um, but I usually use this at night and it makes my skin super plump. I don't know what it is inside this super expensive moisturizer, but I absolutely love it. I have not repurchased this moisturizer, I've already finished it. This is actually an empty bottle, but I love it. Okay, I love this moisturizer. I will definitely repurchase it after I finish my other moisturizers. I have um, the Glow Recipe, which, you know, I'm kind of like, ah, don't really feel like it's doing anything, So I, but I will finish it. And then I also have the Tatcha moisturizers, which, you know, in comparison to this, if you have dry skin, you have dehydrated skin, those moisturizers, don't buy them. Just spend your money on this and it is so, so good. It is expensive. Morning you first, it is so, so expensive. If you're in Singapore, please don't buy it from the counter. Buy it from Duty Free. It is so much cheaper at Duty Free. Indie Lee's Purifying Face Wash. I discovered it this year and I actually really like this facial wash. I didn't think much about facial wash, but I feel like this year, oh sorry, 2019, my skin has really changed. I, it's either the more, the traveling that I'm doing, you know, every week and every two weeks, I'm just traveling and on the plane. My skin is extra, extra dehydrated, which I'll talk about another item. I find that my usual facial wash from the face shop 
and I don't know what else am I use. Soup, some other like Japanese uh, facial washes. Though they are so creamy, but the moment I wash it off my face, I can feel my face really, really tight and just dying for a facial treatment essence from SK2. Like it's so, it sucks the life out of my skin. This, however, this Indili facial wash doesn't. I feel like my skin, after I wash this off, still feels like it's got a bit of moisture. It's still hydrated. And I absolutely love this. It was a surprising discovery in 2019 and I never thought of trying out this brand until I saw some YouTuber, obviously, <laughs> talk about this brand. And I really like it. Sunblock is something that I got really obsessed with this year. And the reason is because I tried Pico Laser, which forced me to use sunblock more often. My esthetician said, you have to use sunblock because if you do laser and you don't put any sunblock, the effects are actually going to be worse because your skin is gonna get even more pigmented. So you have to be pigmented, yeah, you know, more, more pigmentation. So this year I learned the difference between a chemical sunblock and a mineral sunblock and I was like, okay, we're sticking with mineral sunblock. And the one that I got introduced to by watching Dr... I forgot, what, what's her name? One of the YouTubers, she's really popular. Um, this is the Alta MD Skincare and is also Tati's favorite sunblock. This is the UV physical broad spectrum SPF 41 mineral sunblock. It is a zinc oxide 9% and titanium dioxide 7% because it's a mix. I'm about to finish this. I've already got a backup and I really love this. Sadly, you can't get this in Malaysia or Singapore. I actually ordered this on Amazon, but it's worth it. This version is slightly tinted. Let me show you. But if you rub it into your skin, it blends in so well. It is amazing. And it makes your skin look so flawless. I don't know, I just really love this sunblock. So coming back to the super dry skin this year, for the past four months, my skin has been screaming for lotion. Like I come out from the shower, I feel like I need to slap on moisturizer all over my body. Now, I don't do this. Like, all my adult life, the only time that I really slathered on body lotion was when I was studying overseas in a four-season country where there was winter and all. So that was where I'm, the only time I actually said, oh my gosh, my skin is so dry. So that was like, what, 20 years ago? <laughs> and maybe when I go on holidays, like when I went to visit my brother and overseas and it's cold, so I do put on a bit of moisturizer. But I would say for most of my adult life, even when I was a child, I don't need body lotion, like my body is, it's, it's moist. <laughs> but this year or last year, late last year, I have been coming out from the shower feeling like, oh my gosh, I just, it's so, you know that dry feeling? It's like a bit, you know, when you wash your hands too much or you've been soaking your hands um, in water and you come out, it feels like slightly prunish. <laughs> and that's how my skin has been feeling. Oh my gosh, aging sucks, okay. But all right, coming back to the item that I have been loving, Sarah V. Oh, this is a discovery from 2019. In America, my sister-in-law gave me this gigantic tub of moisturizer. This is a moisturizing cream for normal to dry skin. It has ceramides and hyaluronic acid. I also discovered this, heard about this when I was researching about sunblock and the same YouTuber, her name's Dr. Talk to something, I can't, I can't remember. But yeah, she says she loves this. She actually put this on her face. I did try it. It's okay, you know, when I, was, I didn't have any moisturizer, I just stuck, put a bit on my face. It's actually pretty okay. If you have really dry skin, this is not too bad. And it's cheap and oh my gosh, I love it. I've already gone through half a tub. You can't buy this in Malaysia or Singapore, like off the counter, you can't get it from the pharmacy. You have to order it online. iHerb, iHerb sells it. And yeah, I don't need to buy it at the moment, but oh my gosh, CeraVe, you need to be here locally. I always forget to mention my Rifa tool. So I have three tools at the moment. I have the two Rifa ones. This is the smaller one for the eye, for the eye area. I have the bigger one, which you know, you could massage your face and your neck and your decolletage. And I also have the one which I bought in the last Sephora sale, which is the tri -Light. The Rifa tool is my preferred tool because 
it is so relaxing. Like I carry this along with me, the small one for the eye, because I do find that I can like squeeze my face a little bit, you know, massage some limb nodes around my face when I am traveling and it is so nice. The bigger one, obviously, you could really do drainage from your face. And I've been really liking it. Like, I use the tool for drainage, but I've started to go for drainage facials. And, oh my gosh, it is the most relaxing facials that you could ever do. So if you don't have time, I actually really like the Rifa uh, face, face version. So it's a bigger contraption than this. The bigger balls and all of that. So... <laughs> I really like this tool and definitely in the best of 2019. Brio Gio's Scalp Revival is technically not a skincare, but it is the only hair care item that I have here, so skincare. This Scalp Revival Charcoal plus Coconut Oil Micro Exfoliating Shampoo, I believe I discovered it last year. I cannot find the video, <laughs> but yeah, I discovered it and I really like this. This is something that I use to refresh my scalp. There are days that, uh, or weeks, that sometimes my scalp is extra oily and it starts to get irritated or because of my short hair, I started to use a lot of products. So I find that this is a good scrub to get all that gunk out and also just to refresh the scalp. Don't use this too often though. It is quite drying. When I first got it, I was using it like every week, once a week. But now I use it as and when I need to. So maybe every 10 days when I feel like giving my scalp a bit of a kick. So yeah, I do find that it helps, but it's drying. So don't overdo it. Like don't leave it on your scalp for like 10 minutes. Like you're thinking absorbing all the oil from your scalp. No, please don't do that. Scrub it into your head, leave it in for like a minute or two and then wash it out and then put your conditioner. I feel like it is very, very refreshing for your scalp. Let's move on to makeup, and I actually don't have a lot of makeup items. I think with my stop shopping and my low buy, I feel like I also stepped back in all the makeup stuff that I was putting, tried to use a lot of my makeup things, but I found that I'm such a creature of habit, I keep using the same things. For foundation, I was jumping around a lot in all my foundations that I have. I was trying to use a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of La Mer, a little bit of my Guerlain. So I didn't find any foundation that really stood out, except for this one. This foundation was discovered in 2019, and even though I wasn't using it you know, regularly and showing it on my channel. But I found that this foundation, when I was using on like my work days and all of that, I really found that my skin looks super good. It's a light to medium coverage, definitely not more than that. And it's called the Three Flawless Ethereal Fluid Foundation. It, it does what the name says. It's very fluidy, it's very ethereal-like, and I feel like it looks better as the day goes on. So the color that I am using is 202. It has SPF 36 and this is a 30ml bottle. This bronzer I discovered in 2019 and I really, really like it. It looks like I've not used a lot of it but oh my gosh, I have dug my brush into it but it looks like I've hardly made a dent. This is the bronzing powder in Stone Street from Bobbi Brown and it is the most beautiful bronzer. It has a bit of like, you know, can you see? It's like slightly reddish, not orangey, reddish. I'm using it today and I feel like this bronzer is so natural. This is like quite neutral. It's a really, really pretty bronzer. I'd say it's like a neutral tone, definitely leaning more to the cool side, but it has that little bit of red. For blush, this discovery for 2019 has really changed my blush game. I... I'm so into this pinky lavender blush from Shu Uemura. I have been using it so much, I use it alone, or I mix it together with a more orangey brush, a blush like this one from uh, the same brand. So I do mix them together. This pinky one, let me just take it out and see what color it's called. This is M325. It's a matte blush, but it has a bit of lavender, a very cool toned pink, and a cool toned blush makes your skin look so good. I don't know what it is, it's 
it's so good and it goes so well as you when you mix them together so i like to put let's say like a more warm blush like a pinky one um on my cheeks and then i'll take another brush and i'll brush this over the top and i find that it gives you a more lively look just refreshes the skin it's really surprisingly very pretty and shu uemura the sales girl was telling me that this is one of their most popular blushes this m325 color they don't have a name just m325 it is so pretty if you can you see it's got shades of lavender and that cool tone pink it is a very unique color i don't know what other brand makes this kind of purpley lavender pink uh, matte blush i haven't found one so this is really really awesome i love buying lipstick and i love wearing lipstick but i don't like reapplying lipstick like if i go out and i have one coat on i don't tend to reapply like i will bring the lipstick along but i don't know i just don't tend to reapply so it takes me forever to get through lipstick but the one lipstick that i have been wearing a lot last year and a lot of you will always ask me what color it is on my lips and it is this color here this is the Givenchy color 103 in Brune Cretio, Cretio, I'm not gonna try okay but this is a very um I would say mauve yeah a mauve pink it's a nude color and it is oh my gosh I shouldn't bring it super gross but yeah this is the color that I have got on my lips and every time I wear this lipstick you guys would be commenting in the comment section saying, what is that beautiful lip color I've got on? Can you see it's kind of rosy, kind of mauve and with my lip color, it is, it looks nice. It gives me a bit of life on my skin, I guess. It's very nice and it's a very flattering uh, color. Milk Makeup's Kush Lip Balm. Discovered this year when I was in America and I, oh my gosh, I love this. I regret, okay, I regret not buying more. I bought, I think I bought Three, I gave one to my boss and I kept two. This is the color Kenna Tonic. Sadly, I can't buy milk makeup here, so I kind of regret not buying more. But you know, I'm trying not to do that, I'm not trying to buy like too many because I can't finish it. But I love this lip balm. This is such a beautiful My Lips But Better lip balm, and the color is yeah, My Lips But Better. Look at that, it's so glossy, so rich, and just like oh my gosh, so good for the lips. I think I heard about Sonia G in late 2018 but this brush this is the face one brush I only got it last year and it was out of stock for the longest time but when it came in stock I actually bought two and this is the first one the other one is still kept really nicely because I'm so afraid that this will anything will happen to this I can't get that brush because it's always out of stock this face one brush is so unique. I haven't found any other brush brand that has the same shape that's made of natural hair that has just the right amount of give to be a buffing brush. I bought the It Cosmetic brush which had the similar, you know, flat top kabuki style shape but it's synthetic and it doesn't do the same thing. This is an awesome brush for buffing out any kind of you know powder you know put too much blush buff it out you put too much powder buff it out use the Guerlain meteorites buff it in and it is the most amazing brush like if you get any brush from her collection like her entire line this is the one one more makeup item now you know i wasn't supposed to buy any makeup so i actually don't have a lot of makeup palettes but i did buy two one was on sale and one is Ugh, kind of like broke my rule and I bought it because I can't find it here. So these are the only two, yeah, I think these are the only two palettes that I bought in 2019. The Dominic Latte palette and the Natasha Gold palette. Now, I believe this is a limited edition palette and I bought it off Beautylish because they were having, if I'm not mistaken, was like a 20 or 25% discount. So even though it didn't hit my six month mark, I think it hit my three month of me wanting it. But when they had the sale, I decided to jump on it. But oh my gosh, this is between these two palettes. I have been using this palette a lot. Like the eye look that I'm using today. This is so, so beautiful. 
it looks so boring, right? What can you do with gold and brown and gold and brown and gold? But I always get a really pretty look every time I use it. I would go in with these two colors. What are they? The only thing is that she doesn't put like the names on it. But okay, so I'll use Sandstone and Dijon. These two as my base. Like I'll just put it all over the lid, use the same brush and like kind of like, you know, smoke it out a little bit or like, you know, blend it out at the top. And just one color with any of the toppers, I'm good to go. Bit of eyeliner, oh my gosh, so beautiful. I didn't pick the Latte palette, not because I don't like it, but I do find that it's kind of like a basic palette. And I haven't played around with it enough to say that I've used every single color. I keep going in with caramel and vanilla, and I use like macchiato for a bit of a pop. So I've only been using like these few colors, but I haven't really ventured out into these colors and even this hazelnut, I've kind of like dipped into it a little bit. But there is nothing, it's, it's nice and it's, you know, useful and you can get a lot of looks out of it, but it's not as, I don't know, it's not as stunning, right, as, as this gold palette. Okay, moving on to luxury and miscellaneous. Definitely I need to talk about bags, but I could not pick a luxury bag for 2019. I think last year I was really in a, I don't know, like a, not, I don't want to say a rut, but I wasn't really, you know, honing on to one bag that I was like, oh my gosh, it's the best bag ever. I couldn't find one. Not my Urban Spirit backpack, not my Chanel round clutch, or is it round case? Or is it round clutch? The round one. I couldn't say that my LV Kanz is a great bag because it is all, I don't know, I haven't used them enough last year to say that that is the bag. I wanted to say my Foray Le Page tote, but I don't know. I just can't feel like it's like it deserves the best of 2019. But there is one bag, and I, you guys are gonna flip out, okay? But there is one bag that I don't even blink an eye and I grab it. It is so awesome and I've been, I, I, I mean, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. This is gonna shock you guys, but this bag, I've given it to so many people, <laughs> but this is my Naraya bag. <laughs> it, is, it really deserves the bag of 2019. This is understated. It's got the most important thing if you're living in Malaysia, it's got a zip. It's small, it's handy, it's light, it's even got its own base. It's even got its own base. You can dump it into the washing machine and you can wash it. I use this bag every weekend. Like, I don't even think about it. I'm like, uh, Naraya bag. I'm walking around in the mall. Just, I think I, this bag appeared on my Instagram several times. And that is saying something like, I didn't think I would love this bag, but... I really like it. Like when I went to Bangkok in November, I was really contemplating on buying another one in a different color, different design, because they're really cheap. They're like 280 baht. I don't know how much it is. That. It's like 30 ringgit, 40 ringgit. It's so cheap, okay? And I was contemplating on getting another one, but I stopped myself because I'm on a no buy, low buy. And I said, okay, cat, don't do it. Don't just buy because you know you just want another one. Use this until it's torn and tattered. But oh my gosh, this is best bag. <laughs> best bag of 2019. And I actually mean it. Moving up the ranks. <laughs> this wallet to me is the best wallet that I have ever used in my entire adult life. I love small wallets. I do like big wallets, though I haven't used a big wallet in a long time. But I always use two wallets because I travel between two countries, so I have two different currencies. So last year, I got kind of irritated with carrying two different wallets because sometimes when I'm in Singapore and I, you know, maybe need some online, I need to do some online banking and I need my Malaysian credit card, I don't have my Malaysian wallet with me. So I was on a hunt for a wallet that could have enough compartments to keep both of my currencies and both of my cards. And I was hunting high and low for this kind of wallet because I wanted something that was not like a large wallet that was open, but I could, you know, just a decent sized wallet. And this is the one. This is the Coach Zip Around wallet. And it is a really close dupe 
to the LV Zippy Wallet, the old version. This has changed my entire wallet changing life because it opens up flat. Okay, it opens up flat and I keep one set of cards for one country on one side and I keep one set of cards for one country on one side. So I think this is Malaysia. As you can see, I've got some Singapore money here and this side. There is, there is a slip compartment here which I put things and there are two slip compartments on the inside. You can put your cash, like I'm putting my cash vertically down. It's really easy. Look, it's like that, it goes down. And there's so much space. This is so amazing, so cheap. When I bought it, it was 140 USD. After I showed it online, like on my haul in America, I checked online, actually the price went up. I was quite surprised because like, oh, how did the price go up like within a month? So I was kind of lucky to get it at 140. I don't know the price right now, but I will link it down below. You guys, if you're looking for that Zippy wallet, the LV version, which you probably have to buy it pre love because they don't make it anymore, forget it. Okay, just forget it. <laughs> get this you can get it brand new i have been using it every day since i got it my other wallets i don't care about it anymore i don't have to think about you know take my malaysian wallet take my singapore wallet you know take it together i have two wallets it's all in one this is the most amazing you don't need a big wallet big one nope it's super compact it is for jewelry and accessories my Cartier watch and my Cartier necklace. This is the Trinity necklace. These two have been staples in my wardrobe. Like every time I accessorize, I always want to take this necklace and I always have been just enjoying my Cartier watch. I was contemplating between my Cartier and my Chanel. I think my Chanel is also a big love for 2019, but something about my Cartier this year or last year, made me really fall in love with it. I feel like it's such an accessory. It stands out. It just goes with my vibe last year. So I decided to pick my Cartier watch as best of 2019. This is for my coffee lovers out there. This is the Mocha Express Balati. I discovered it last year. It was introduced to me by my best friend Shireem. And ever since I saw her make a cup of coffee with this, I was like, you can make an espresso without an espresso machine in your own home. Oh my gosh, I need one. And ever since I bought this, we have been making awesome coffee at home, whether it's, you know, Starbucks or whatever, you know, just any type of Lavazza. Oh, I can't remember all the names right now, but oh my gosh, we can make lovely coffee. I'm actually having coffee right now and it is so good, so good. Don't need an expensive coffee maker. You just need a stove. And this has been, I would say, coffee life changing. The final item from last year is coconut oil. <laughs> this is the Organic Virgin Coconut Oil Cold Press. Best for cooking and drinking. Hmm. I don't use it for cooking or drinking. I use it for oil pulling. I do oil pulling at least five times a week. If I wake up early enough, before I brush my teeth, I'll take a tablespoon of coconut oil and I will swish it around my mouth like mm, for, I try to do it for at least 15 minutes, like 10 to 15 minutes. If I can, like sometimes I'm like really early, I wake up really early and I've got lots of time, I'm doing it for like 20, 30 minutes. I'm like sitting there like, oh, okay, the first few times that you do it, it is kind of like weird, but I actually really like the process right now. I find it's very therapeutic. I like the coconutty, chocolatey uh, taste of the coconut oil. It does take a bit of getting used to, but after a while you do get used to it and get good coconut oil. Okay, don't get the like, you know, a bit rancid. <laughs> get good ones. It's quite pleasant. It's not terrible. And it's really good for your gums. It's really good for your teeth. And it's just generally a good a traditional method of cleaning your mouth. I still brush my teeth after I do oil pulling, but I do find that ever since I've been doing oil pulling, I've been doing oil pulling now for, I would say a good year and a half. Mm, easily, easily, year and a half. And I find that my gums have 
just been really generally healthier. My gums are also less inflamed. It takes a while. You don't do it like today and tomorrow you see the difference. I've been doing it for one year and a half and I find that my gums are healthier. Coconut oil actually has a lot of vitamins. So if you have any like gum issues like bleeding gums, you know, bad breath, uh, any kind of things, actually some of this, it doesn't hurt, right? It doesn't cause any problems. So there's no harm trying. And I just want to mention this because I know a lot of people suffer from you know certain things about their mouth and you don't know how to fix it and i don't think this is a cure but i think it's a prevention and it's also you know an additional help that you give your gums right organic virgin coconut oil great stuff not for cooking not for drinking <laughs> so those are my picks for 2019 i hope you guys enjoyed my selection if you did if you enjoyed the video please give me a thumbs up and yeah hope you guys are also subscribed make sure you click that button somewhere around here there's a bell as well click that click that <laughs> i don't usually encourage this kind of things you know it's really up to you but it would mean a lot to me if you join me in my youtube journey if you got any questions about any of the items that i've mentioned or you're gonna try any of the items let me know in the comment section down below otherwise you guys take care and i will see you in my next video bye